My first patient was a veteran who had schizophrenia. No one could figure out how to put this guy's life back together. I was so moved by this moment that I wanted to figure out how to take these same tools and these same approaches that have been used to reconnect soul to the mind as well, the soul to the brain, and to heal lies through that manner. We are essentially looking to create a pacemaker for the brain that finds or is used to target parts of the brain that are out of electrical rhythm and puts them back into a normal rhythm so that we can feel and think and experience life in the same way that those without neuropsychiatric disorders do. The Khan Neurotechnology Grant played a critical role in helping us to advance the timeline of developing our recording approach, both in terms of setting up a lot of the technology and the lab space. Investments like those encourage researchers to take highly innovative, high-risk uh, steps that many times are where the cures are found. So I'm eternally grateful for their support. It's made all the difference in advancing this technology in my lab. Duke University, in general, endeavors uh, to have excellence in, in everything they do. And uh, Stephanie and I wanted to encourage Duke to aspire to excellence uh, in neuroscience. The initiative was to be bold. It would be great to fund something that is extreme, because you never know, extreme could work. The scope of the grant was to develop a new type of technology to record electrical information ultimately from the brains of humans. So we'll start developing an model species, uh, but ultimately apply this technology to record millions of neurons simultaneously from the human brain. Kaf's efforts, you know, explore a new realm, and uh, we, we have hope that, uh, that he can make a difference. Um, he's, he's a brilliant guy. In 2016, I was awarded a Presidential Early Career Award for scientists and engineers. It was a tremendous honor uh, meeting President Obama. I returned again um, at the Frontiers Conference at the end of his administration, which was really designed to highlight a lot of the investments they've made throughout the brain enterprise. Today, Dr. DeRosa has both a Ph.D. in engineering and a medical degree. He heads up a research team at Duke University studying the brain and mental illness. In the future that I see are our, our, our brothers and our sisters, our, our mothers and our, our daughters and our partners will have lived out their life's greatest dreams because in the future that I see, we simply won't diagnose mental illness by monitoring brain waves or cure mental illness by tuning them.